so so the, we are the California Historical Group. Uh, it's a uh, World War II uh, living history uh, reenactment group. It's been around since the 80s. It's a nonprofit. Um, we're kind of headquartered in Southern California, but we have members that go all the way up into you know Northern California. We as a unit are doing uh, garrison troops for uh, at the time it was a hundred legate military reservation, right? It wasn't a fort yet. And uh, a lot of divisions came through here and trained. We thought it was best to do uh, garrison troops that would have been stationed here. So that's why there's no patches. We, we could not find any of the guys wearing patches that were stationed here. But I was, I was an ROTC in college, and uh, I was just in the computer lab one day, and I was poking around at World War II stuff, and it's like, yeah, World War, like, civ like Civil War, but World War II? There's tanks? That's rad. So uh, that, that was kind of how I, I did it. And that was, that was 20 years ago. We've got guys that do uh, all the major belligerents, um, American, British, German, Russian. And we'll do uh, displays like this and public events. And then we'll do uh, private tactical events where we actually shoot each other with blanks. So we've had, you know, 100 on 100 with tanks. And we did those actually at Camp Roberts. So we would stay in the barracks and we'd go to Tango Uniform and we would do full armored warfare on, on Camp Roberts. We're as excited as you are and vice versa, which, which is, it's, it's funny, it's, it's nice. I'm supporting the 328 uh, Medical Hospital range this weekend. I'm a reenactor and when we were driving by I saw the tents and the vehicles and I was like, I gotta stop. But right now I'm with uh, 71st Pennsylvania uh, Civil War Unit and I've, I've done some uh, reenacting with the Great War Society down in Southern California. So in real life I'm actually a stagehand. So I work backstage in theaters, uh, rock and roll concerts, things like that. This, this particular setup would be 1942, 43, somewhere in that era. So the cartridge belt, this is a first aid pouch. I also have the bayonet. This is the, the longer version. This is one of those details where I said that, that changed throughout the war. It got shorter uh, later on because this is the, the length they used in World War I, but they changed the exterior, the sheath or the holster. Uh, I also have my canteen over here. This would have been your standard issue M1 Garand, or Garand. It's a semi-automatic. It would hold an eight round clip and it was loaded from the top. You'd put the, you'd put the magazine or the clip right on top there. You'd use the blade of your hand to hold the charging handle back. You'd push the rounds down in there. And you're ready to go. Based on the manufacturing year, it was sometime 1944 that this one was made. It's it's like any anybody else's hobby. You spend you know your time and effort and, and passion for it, accumulating all this stuff, and you know it just it never ends. You think, oh, I have the basic kit, and you're like, well, wait a minute, I want stuff that's later in the war, or I want stuff that's earlier in the war. It just it never ends. But yeah, it's all my own hard-earned money going to something I love.